Hello, welcome to our base tutorial of Quick Surface. This tutorial we'd like to make a very simple demonstration of how we can reconstruct this gear. What is interesting about this is the fact that uh, to the teeth of the gear uh, tilted and this is actually the challenge. Although this will demonstrate this, we'll go again for the basic that applies for most of every reverse engineering challenge. So let's begin. First of all, when you bring in your scan data, you'll notice that they are not aligned. This is quite common when you get a scan data from different scanners that do not have ability to align the object. So that's why Quick Surface allows you with simple and efficient tools to do this. First of all, I look at the part and I see that this is probably my base plane and the center of rotation is this cylinder. The way we do this is just by using our extract primitives. And then I'm using my magic wand to select the flat area. As you can see, the tolerance is quite high, so it captures even more of the area that are not flat. So you can use the slider until you get the points which are definitely lying on this base plane. For me, this is good enough, it's trustful, and I can just press to fit the plane. I would like to explore the quality of the part, how flat this surface is, so I'm using our analyzing tool, just click on analysis, which will give me the quality of the plane. What I notice here, I'm playing with the 20 microns, is it's almost green. So this is the best thing I can achieve. Why? Because this part is probably damaged or something wrong with it, and that's why you get this red area here, but most of it is green. So this is good enough, I will just press create and stay. Why I did this create and stay? Because the next step for me would be to get the center, which will define my z-axis. This is quite important because this is a rotational shape. What I'm going to do, is just to select the areas that will define my cylinder. I'm missing quite a lot of information here, but I will just challenge Quick Surface to see what it can do. Using again the magic wand with the sensitivity, I try to get just the information that describes the cylinder. And perhaps I can get some more here. I can help myself just by using our brush tool. Make sure that select through is unchecked, so I can get only the information that it's needed. I just brush over some of the area that lay on the cylinder. The main goal here is to get the axis, that's all we need. I will just then press fit the cylinder. What is important here for me at this moment is to get this cylinder perfectly perpendicular to my base plane. For this reason, I can just tell the software to be constrained as a perpendicular to my extracted plane. Now I get this in a more accurate way. I'm happy, I will just press create. I probably can define another constraint to define another direction, but this for me is good enough, and I'm moving to the next step, which is to align the object. The alignment means that I will pick my features that will define my coordinate system. How we do this is by using our align functionality, which is available on the main toolbar. I click on the align and then select align by coordinate system. Align by coordinate system requires three features. So I just picked the first one, the plane. This guarantees that my coordinate system will be exactly on this plane. But then as the next step, I just need to pick this cylinder that will define my axis. In this case, I need probably to flip this so I can get the z-axis upward. What we have here is a new location of the object where the center will be here and this plane will be perfectly aligned to the bottom plane. I don't have another constraint, so I'll just leave it as it is now and just press apply. Now, to test if I align the object properly, I will just place it in the standard views, for example, top view, left, right, and you can see that it's perfectly aligned. 
This was the fundamental step for me to start my reverse engineering process. I will just hide my references for now because I don't need them. So let's plan how we will reconstruct this shape. This is a circular shape that is extruded and then I can just cut out my teeth. At least this is what I would do. Perhaps you have different ideas that you can create this and add material. But in my demonstration I will just do it opposite. I will just create the full circle and then we'll cut out this uh, um, information from my main solid body. How we can do this is just by starting doing a 2D sketch. I can just try and create a slice from the scan data here, but for me this is not good enough. So what is the better strategy here is to use our outline mesh. The outline mesh is good because it just takes all the, the, the mesh that is projected on the reference plane and this is a way better representation. This part has not been very well scanned, so I'm not going to trust this information, but this looks to me as a perfect circle here to get what I need. I can just create my sketch and will hide my mesh for now because I don't need it. There are two ways now for you to proceed. You can just add a circle with a specific radius. You start from the center. And if you want to actually get points from the scan data, you can hold the control key that will guarantee that when you move it will just snap to one of the points from the scan data. The software suggests the radius based on the interpolation or based on the scan data that you choose. But of course you know that for the manufacturing you always need to have a round number so it's in your hands to decide what you want to do. For me, definitely here, I would like just to be 97.3. And although it's not perfectly interpolating the shape, this is actually what I need for my shape to be. Let's take a look at the next step. I created my profile. Logically, I need to extrude this. How we can do this? Just select the sketch and pick the command extrude which will pop up in the quick menu or you can select it from the top toolbar. Now you see we have two handles that allows us to make this the way we desire, we can move it up and down but in my case I just want to be just precisely on my scan data. For this purpose I will just go and select our snapping option how the snapping option works is this, that if I just take the handle, if I just move it over uh, the mesh, it will just snap on it and in real time will show you where, how good it is in regards to your scan date. So you can pick and take a decision how it wants to be. I will do the same for the bottom plane once I started. You see that it's already snapping to the mesh and you can see the deviation and you can decide what it needs to be. Now you have these weird numbers. I trust very much this bottom plane. So what I can do, I just tell the software that the sketch should be on the bottom plane. That will be my reference. And then this distance, the depth one, from the bottom plane to top plane will be this number. Now you can choose and just type a different number, probably 2375, and then this is most likely to be the more accurate result that you want to achieve. The reason I'm showing this is because reverse engineering is not always replicating the original scan data because they might, the part might be wrong, the scan data might be noisy, so it's in your hand to actually create a useful cut results based on your mm, design intent. I'll just accept this and it's very simple cylindrical shape. Let's move now to create the, the teeth. What I need to do is just start uh, rebuilding this by creating a 2D sketch. I'll just take a slice that will define my one of the 
sections here and we'll create a new sketch. I will just hide the mesh for now. And because this is a pattern, I just need to trust one of them. And I just uh, pick this area that will just create a solid that I will cut from the main body. I'm going to remodel this um, sliding here just by extracting primitives. I will just select this to be a line and also this to be a line here. Go back. What we can do now is just by selecting a corner trim, I'm going to brush over the corners so they can intersect. But also I'm going to use the Auto Fillet option and brush again over this intersection. This will create a fillet for me based on the scan data that I have. I'll go back and adjust my profile here. Probably I just need to extend this more. The reason for this is that later when I want to cut this from the main shape, it actually has enough in material to get a final result. And the last thing I want to do is close this because I want to work with solids. I just create another line. Press OK. So I created my first sketch at the bottom and I'm going to create another one that will define my other level of this profile. I'm going to 2D sketch, move it up somewhere here and we'll create this new sketch. What you see here is the um, visualization of the other sketches and but I need to have the same corresponding profile here. I'm going to use the function which is called project other visible sketches to get this information from the sketch that I have before. So I can use this as an editable feature. I played with this example and we'll show you that actually I need to rotate this at 5 degrees. What I mean with this is just I'm going to create a pattern which is this command and we'll select the circular pattern and we'll make it at 5 degrees. This is the profile that starts from this location and ends up here. I will accept this. I don't need this profile, just delete and press OK. What we have here now are two sketches that are good enough for me to define my cutting and I will move to the next step which is using the loft command which is available into the surfacing drop down or you can go to the surfacing tab and select loft. Make sure that your select edge is selected and then I can just pick the first profile and then the second one. You can see it created this uh, information for me but that's not good enough for me. I just need this to be way longer so I can add it something like 5 millimeters. I can just turn on the, the other solid, see this this is good enough for cutting and I'm happy with this. I'll just press OK. Now the problem is that we would like to use our tools for what is called the Boolean operation. Boolean operations, they work with the solids, but we have a main body as a solid, but this is open-ended. And what I need to do is to close this and form a solid. You can see that there is one solid and there is one surface here. Let me hide the solid now. What I'm going to use is our fill surface command. Make sure the select edge change is enabled and pick this shape so I can close this face. I'll press create and stay because I would like to close it on the other side, which is here. Press OK. Now I created my solid. So you can see in the feature tree we have two solids now. We are nearly done with the project. Let's uh, move on and logically what I need to do is create a pattern along the z-axis. I will just create this shape. 
Select Pattern, Circular. Again, I know it's fun, but you need to count the number of these teeth. And I found that there are 106 with experimenting and trying different values. So I just type in this 106 instances here and press uh, apply so I can see the preview. You can see it's exactly where they need to be. Again, please note that this might not get precisely on the scan data, but this is what we call it design intent. This is what you want to achieve. So I can press OK to accept this pattern. We have now one main body and a circular pattern of um, 106 solid body. The last step that I need to do is just to define my final object. I'll just click on the main solid and instead of modifying it, I'm going to use the function which is called cut from this solid. You can find this in the quick context menu or if it doesn't appear, I can just take it from the main toolbar and press cut. The software defined its main body and now you need to pick what are the cutting tools. In my case is this one, I just press on one of these solids and wait for the software until it completes this cutting process. It may take a while because there are 106 solids that need to cut the, the main body until you get the final result. So we need to wait a little bit. And as you see, we managed to get the final results, which is the final shape which we wanted to achieve. We'll press OK and we have this final result. So this is what we got after our Boolean cut operation. I will leave you to exercise and understand how to cut this. I hope this is really easy for you as we wanted to show you how to create this shape here. I hope this video was useful for you to learn another step for reverse engineering. And if you have any questions, contact us on our email. And thank you for watching.